Well, thanks again, Robin, for doing this with me. <laughs> Hi, so, uh, nice to be here. So would you like to tell me a little bit about your background and how Nango started? Sure. Um, I'm originally a software engineer by training. Um, I started a B2B SaaS a few years ago. We built that to about 55 people. We had a lot of integrations with other like software systems. Um, and there we sort of like, you know, discovered the pain um, of running those. So we had like 15% of our engineers actually just working on integrations and maintaining them and you know, adding a few more. Um, and so that's how we sort of discovered that. And then, you know, went deeper and realized that like there's a lot of teams out there basically building integrations one by one from scratch. And so, yeah, that's something that we wanted to improve upon. And that's how like sort of Nango got started. I love it. These are the best problems to work on, the ones that come from personal experience. Yeah, the ones that you know yourself, definitely. Uh, <laughs> you just yeah. check out the GitHub repo, and I think it takes like, you know, two, three minutes to set up a first sync, and, and from there on out, it should hopefully be quite smooth. Exactly. So now, it is the first year of Nango. How did you approach finding your first contributors? Where did they come from, and uh, what have you learned maybe from it? Yeah, that was a really interesting one, you know? Like, we were not really, like, looking for contributors per se, um, I think we were definitely like, you know, looking for users and people to try it and give us feedback. And, and that sort of naturally morphed into people contributing. Um, I think one of the things I was very positively surprised about with like you know, the whole open source community coming sort of from more a traditional, you could say sort of like cloud B2B SaaS background. So people don't just raise problems, but they like actively contribute solutions. So as quickly as we had a few people like, you know, find problems or, or small, you know, bugs, they would typically like say, look, here's the issue and here's the PR that fixes it. Um, and that was, you know, really, really cool, obviously, or, and it continues to be really cool. People come with a solution prepared, right? And they're like, you know, here's my PR, basically, that fixes the bug that I found yesterday that, you know, I messaged you on Slack about. And I was like, this is amazing. And at the moment, it's just the founders uh, working on this full time, or are you also looking to expand your team, maybe involve some contributors more? Are you no, person? currently it's just the, the two founders who are working on this. And then, you know, we do have a few contributors who are contributing quite actively. Um, and then, you know, we're definitely looking to expand the team in terms of like hiring and growing the team, right? Like we're starting to see, you know, good growth, basically. Um, we went from, you know, zero to 200 stars in, in less than two months and, and like 100 people in the community. So like, we're starting to see good traction. I think it makes sense to double down on the team as well um, in order to be able to, to like, you know, continue the trajectory that we're on, basically, and, and make sure everybody has a great experience from day one. No, that, that makes total sense. And so do you think it's an edge when it comes to product development to actually be open source and you can move faster like that? Um, I think for us, it's definitely been a great fit. Um, I'm not sure like every, you know, product would benefit as much from it. I think like it's sort of, you know, if you're building for engineers and you're building a very like infrastructure or, or dev centric product, I think, you know, there's a lot of advantages. I think it's actually one of the really interesting sort of movements that's happening is that I think a lot more companies are going open source first um, this way. Um, so like, you know, like I think sort of like cal.com and, and, and GitLab certainly was one of the very first guys. Um, and now, you know, you have companies like Posttalk, um, Airbyte, right? Like sort of doing a lot of, of, of things there. Databases have been open source for a very long time. That's been a very successful model for them. Um, so I think there's like a, a big, you know, sort of culture around that, um, especially for dev centric products. I'm not sure it'd be great sort of like for everybody. Um, I think it obviously you know, depends what you're building basically.